Hey, Sapdolph. I heard we're recording an episode on security today. Is this true? Yep. Today we're going to talk about secure storage. Not a very complicated topic, but one that causes a bit of trouble with system copies and sometimes with system restores. Okay, what is it? Does secure storage have anything to do with the sex store transaction? Yes, exactly. But let's start at the beginning. Do you know how passwords for RFC connections are stored? Isn't it the same as all other passwords, such as user credentials? No, it's something entirely different. Much more difficult to do securely. Hmm, but why? I can't see the difference. The difference is significant. For a very long time, systems have not stored the passwords of users connecting to them. To say it somewhat simplistically, a password hash is stored instead. The hash calculation only works one way. From the password, it is possible to calculate the hash. From the hash, it is not possible to calculate the password. Therefore, the system does not need to store passwords. And when a user enters a password, a hash is calculated from it, and compared with the one stored in the database. This is a very interesting but broad topic, rather for a separate episode. Sounds reasonable. Can't the same be done for RFC passwords? Unfortunately, no, because our system has to provide an explicit password when connecting to the target. This has been a problem for a very long time, and for a long time developers have been solving it in different ways. And that's what secure storage was created for. It stores passwords, pins, and other secret data. Could we see this in practice? I was about to propose this, to avoid talking too much. I will log into my system and create a test RFC connection. I go to the SM59 transaction and choose a new connection. I call it test. It is type 3, which is the connection to the ABAP system. It doesn't matter that much, but I want to show the connection where I will save a password. I enter the destination address and go to the Logon and Security tab. I provide the client number on the target system, username, and of course, the password, the secure storage of which is the subject of our conversation. Destination is saved. The password status has also changed to saved. This is a very important status that says that everything is fine with saving the password. I can now proceed to sex store. This is the transaction for secure storage. The first thing that catches your eye is a red indicator that says I'm using the default key, which is not secure. We'll come back to this in a moment, but first I'll display the contents of the storage. I'm in the check entries tab, not selecting any filters. I'm executing the report. This is my secure storage. On the left side, I have a breakdown of clients and categories. RFC calls are cross-client, so that's where they go in this section. As you can see, here is my password for the test connection. There are 13 entries in total, which is worth remembering for a moment. And can you tell what was wrong with the key that displayed a red status, since here everything is green? Sure, let's go back to it now, because it's important. All records are encrypted with the default key. Their status is green, because they can be read, but it's worth understanding that encryption with the default key is like no encryption. So how do we change this key? Let's start with the fact that the Key Management tab gives the files where the encryption keys are stored. These are files belonging to the Secure Storage in File System Mechanism, or SSFS for short. By default, they are located in the System Global Directory and the Security Subdirectory. There is an R S E C S S F S directory. In it are the key and data folders. Note the limited access permissions, only for the A4H ADM user. The data is stored in the data catalog, in the SSFS A4H DAT file. Why so? Can't everything be kept in a database? This is designed for security. Even if someone gets too wide access to the database, he can't decrypt the passwords because the necessary keys are on the file system in SSFS. This is kind of two-level security. Okay, but we have to avoid encryption with the default key, right? Yes, that is why we will go through the procedure for generating a new key. I click the button to generate a new key. It opens window with the ID of the new key, as well as the key itself. It would seem that since the key will be stored in SSFS, there is no need for additional backup. However, 
it is always a good idea to save this key in a safe place. Keeping in mind that it is secret, because it allows us to decrypt passwords on our system. Later I will show and practice why this is important. For now, I will put it in Notepad. Of course, this is not a safe place in the long run, so don't follow it. I always write down the key ID. This is important so that I can later see which key the system is asking me about. I already have the pair copied, so I can move on to the next step. Since SAP recommends backing up the keys, the system will make sure that I have saved the correct string. The key displays again with a few missing characters. I have to find them and type them in place of the question marks. Otherwise, the procedure will not continue. Zero, three, seven, C, eight, and A. Zero, three, seven, C, eight, and A. Continue. Success. A new key has been generated. If I close the window now, the key will be saved, but not used. The continue button will cause all Sextor entries to be encrypted with the new key. This is what I want. Again, success. 13 entries were encrypted with the new key. The key appeared in the list. You can see who generated it so that you know who to approach as if the key backup is missing. And most importantly, the key encryption status indicator turned green. It's always worth confirming the status of all passwords stored in secure storage. All 13 in green, all in order. That is, as I understand it, you generated a new encryption key. It has been stored in SSFS on the disk. Then all the passwords in the sex store were encrypted with this new key. Exactly. To confirm this, I'll show you what it looks like on the SSFS side. The DAT file was modified because a new entry was added to it, which is our key. We can take a look at what is stored in SSFS. The RSEC SSFX command is used for this. Usage. RSEC SSFX. Arguments, then command and finally required and optional command arguments. I will not discuss all the commands. We will be interested in the list, which shows a list of things saved in SSFS, and possibly a compact to make a cleanup. By default, the location of SSFS files is determined by environment variables. However, since it can be changed by profile parameters, you can specify the correct profile based on which the location is to be determined. Let's see what we have in SSFS using the list command. As you can see, the key to the sex store is there. We can compare it with my notes I made generating the key. Same ID, so this is the key. Clear. So only the encryption key is stored in SSFS, right? That's right. I will now make a copy of the data file for the presentation of the emergency situation. I copy it to TMP. We will need it later when simulating a system failure. Are we going to simulate a failure now? Not yet. In a while. For now, I'd like to show you the process of replacing the key in Sextor. As with the first key, I go to the Key Management tab. I click the Generate button and go through the well-known procedure for saving the key in a safe place. By the way, just as passwords should be changed periodically for security reasons, so should keys be replaced periodically. I copy the ID of my new key into a text file. I do the same with the key itself. I probably don't need to mention that for real systems, the key should not be shown off to the whole internet. It is secret and therefore we store it in a safe and discreet place. I think you don't need to say that. Our audience is experienced administrators and discreet, so no one will reveal your keys. I hope so. And that anyone who has learned something from this video will subscribe to the channel and give a like. Feedback is very important. Saved. In the last step, I allow all passwords to be re-encrypted with the new key. 13 entries updated. The new key is included in the list as the current one. I check usage and see that 13 entries are under the new key, and none under the old key. But for now, I can't remove the old one, because the buffer's lifetime hasn't passed. 
If so, are both keys in the SSFS? Let's see. I use the known command. Yes, both keys are in our file. That is, you can have more keys on file and the system knows which one to use. Yes, that's what the ID is for. I will confirm that the status of all entries in SexStore is correct. Yes, everything in green. All entries correctly encrypted. What's next? I will quickly define a new RFC connection to see if the password will also be encrypted correctly with the new key. I give the name Test2, connection to the ABAP system, host of the target server. In the next tab, of course, I have to enter a password. Otherwise, there would be nothing to save in the sex store. And saved. Back to the secure storage. I want to check the entries. I don't want filters. I am running a report. Still everything in green. Of course, the entry associated with test 2 is in the list. I go to the key management tab. I check the usage. As you can see, all 14 entries are encrypted with the latest key. Fully clear. Are we now going to handle the fake failure? Okay, let's do this. How will it look like? Will you restore the system from a backup? No, we're just imagining it. So it will be a simulated failure. First, I will stop the system using the SAP control command. What's next? Now, imagine this situation. My SAP machine has been completely destroyed. I need to restore the system from backup. Since my database backup logs, I managed to restore it to the latest point in time without any problems. So, I have the state of the system as it is now. So no data loss. But what about SSFS? Well, unfortunately, the last file system backup is a bit older. Therefore, I was not able to restore the last version of the file storing the keys. So I think I have a problem. So you have the passwords in the database encrypted with a newer key that is not present in SSFS. That's right. This is exactly the situation I want to simulate. First, I will make a copy of the current file, just in case. Oh, I see that the system has just stopped. Yes, indeed. And once there is a copy, what next? I made a copy. Now I'm restoring the old SSFS file, the one that does not contain the latest key. It's done. The old file is in place. I will now restart the system. That is, we pretend that the system is restored after a crash, the database is recovered. But we expect problems with the sex store. This can cause at least some of the RFC connections to not work. Yes, but we will check everything once the system is started. This should not take much time. No, I should be logged in right away. There you go, I'm in the system. What do we check first? Let's start with an RFC destination. In transaction SM59, I can check definition of my RFC. But I'm the most interested in password status. This is invalid. Yes, I can check also the second S RFC. It's the same. Yes. Let's go to SexStore to see what the list of available encryption keys looks like. Hmm, it looks fine. Yes, but only until I check the usage. As you can see, there is information about the key with which 13 entries are encrypted, but the status is red. Instead, we have an option to import the key. On the other hand, before I do that, I will take a look at what the contents of the SexStore look like. Yes. 13 entries in error status. Seeing something like this can cause an administrator a lot of stress. Of course. Here are my two RFC passwords that show as invalid in SM59. Can we fix this situation? Sure. I'll go to the key management tab and see how to restore the missing key. Rechecking usage. This key is missing. ID is important. I click import, the red one. I am asked to provide the encryption key. This is the ID. Luckily, I saved it in a safe place, although in my case, it is just Notepad. And again, the same ID, so I copy the key to the clipboard. Let's see if it works when I paste it into SAP. It worked. Yes, we have only one entry encrypted with the current key. However, for 13 passwords, the key we just recovered was used. Let's see if the sex store is green. Yes, all green. Great. So the job is done. For the order, I still want to get rid of the entries encrypted with the key I just recovered. 
I want full consistency and all entries encrypted with one key, the one that is marked as current. But before I do that, I will show what happens when I update a password that is encrypted with a key other than the current one. Let's do this with the test destination. Password status is OK, but I can always change it. OK, so we wrote down the password and it must be encrypted in some way. Will the same key as before be used, or will the current key be used? Let's see what key management shows. I need to check usage. It shows that only 12 entries were encrypted with the restored key. Now the second entry is encrypted with the current key. So system saved the password, which I just changed using the current key. Now I can re-encrypt everything using the current key, and it's done. Everything encrypted with the same key. Could we double check if content of the sex store is green? As you can see, everything is green. Great, then it's done. Not so fast. It remains to clean up. Admittedly, removing old keys too quickly is not always a good idea. But this time, we will remove all the inactive keys right away. I simply click Delete next to an inactive key, and it disappears from the list. OK, very simple. And can we confirm that the key was also removed from the disk? I mean SSFS. Sure. See, there is only one key, the one with the FE5 ending. The other one I removed from the sex store disappeared here as well. OK, thank you, Sapdolf. It may not have been a very complicated topic, but it was important from a security point of view. I didn't think before that passwords can be stored in one system in different ways, depending on how they are used. No problem. May your passwords always be well encrypted and your keys secure. See you next time.